For two weeks, uh, we are having a conversation on strategy making. This is the third week or the third program of the series. And we are going to talk about an important topic of goal setting uh, in this week's program. In the last two weeks, uh, we've discussed or I've shared my opinion with you. In my belief, anyone can make strategies. So uh, it's not only the people who are sitting at the topmost uh, position in organization or in governments uh, who can make strategies, but uh, pretty much anyone can learn the skill and hone the skills of strategy making. The second episode, which came out last week, uh, I shared a few tips uh, for the new strategy makers so they can uh, practice and become better uh, at strategy making. Uh, the goal setting, which is the topic of this week, to me is the most important component of the entire strategy uh, making uh, framework. Uh, I've explained to you that there are three components to it. Uh, the first component is the goal setting. The second component is a uh, decision on which actions to take. Uh, so the goals can be achieved. And the third component uh, is the measuring criteria that you will use to see uh, that how far you have come towards achieving uh, the goals. Why I say that goal setting is uh, uh, the most important because uh, you don't want to set the wrong goals. If you set the goals wrong, uh, then after wasting a lot of time, a lot of energy, a, lo a lot of effort, money, uh, you'll arrive at a place where you realize that you didn't want it to come here. It was not the right outcome that you were looking for. Uh, I personally spend most of my time as a professional, uh, as an expert in strategy making, in setting the goals. When we put together a strategy in form of a document, uh, can be around 45 pages to 60, 65 pages long. Uh, and when it comes to the goals, you know, one goal can take up to two lines. Uh, in, a, in a bullet point format and in a strategy document there can be one, two or at a maximum uh, three goals that you uh, define. So we're talking about six to seven lines in a, in a document as long as 60 pages uh, but these six to seven lines are perhaps the most uh, important uh, lines of this entire document. Before you, uh, you know, set your goal there are two uh, steps that you need to take. Uh, the first step is that of uh, defining uh, your beneficiaries, the beneficiaries of the strategy. And the second step uh, is that of identifying the needs, the challenges, the requirements, the problems of these beneficiaries uh, that you want to address. In my experience, I've come across uh, uh, many instances where the beneficiaries were not uh, either they were too narrow uh, in terms of definition or too broad uh, or sometimes too vague. Uh, so defining the beneficiary is, is very important in setting your goals. A person who's uh, just started to practice their strategy making skills, uh, I would advise them to uh, make strategies uh, close to themselves uh, in their homes or in the immediate functional areas of uh, their work. So goal setting is somewhat easier for them because they know they're, so they themselves are the beneficiaries or people around them that they know on a personal level uh, are their beneficiaries. Uh, so they, it is relatively easy for them uh, to build an understanding of the needs and the problem. Uh, I mean, for their own problem, it's easier. They already know it uh, for the problems or the challenges uh, or the needs of their family or people in their immediate vicinity. It's relatively easy for them to uh, talk to them and learn uh, and then set goals based on that. Uh, in terms of an organization, be it a commercial organization or, or a public sector organization, uh, it is primarily the, the, the clients or the beneficiaries uh, that you need to uh, uh, sort of survey or research with to understand their needs, their problems, their challenges. Uh, so it's, it's basically uh, the clients or the customer of a commercial organization and the beneficiaries of a public sector organizations. Uh, let me give you an example of beneficiaries here. So if let's say a public sector organization uh, which is working in the agriculture, the beneficiary of course uh, will be the farmers. If you take it at a sector level, uh, obviously uh, defining the beneficiaries becomes slightly more complex because uh, again, give, let me give you an example of the agriculture as a sector. Uh, the beneficiaries will not only be the farmers, uh, but another important players in the value chain, you will have the input suppliers, the seed companies, 
the uh, implements agriculture implement manufacturing companies in case of uh, livestock the vaccine manufacturing companies and the feed mills uh, on the input side and on the marketing side the processing companies the distribution companies uh, they will all uh, of course will be the beneficiaries the entire value chain the important players in the whole value chain uh, will be the beneficiaries uh, of such a strategy the second component is to accurately and properly uh, define the challenges uh, the problem the pain point or the needs of these uh, beneficiaries uh, so first you define the beneficiaries correctly and then you define what needs what challenges if they face that you want to address and based on these two things you build uh, the goals uh, accurately now let me give you uh, examples of goals uh, which were set wrong or the goals which were set uh, right um, and again let's continue with our example of the agriculture sector since we are already talking about it uh, i came across uh, certain uh, farmer groups uh, the farmer organizations and they defined their problem or their challenge as uh, the high cost of inputs when it comes to the income generation uh, since they are in competition uh, with international in the international market and export import is possible so the revenue side doesn't really is really not in their control uh, but the cost of uh, inputs is increasing day by day the electricity is getting expensive the seed the fertilizer everything is getting expensive so for them this was the challenge uh, but when we went a little deeper we, we did our research we did our comparisons uh, we realized that this was not the real challenge there wasn't this was basically a symptom to uh, a deeper more underlying uh, challenge or the problem uh, which was a lower yield so uh, the farmers in let's say united states of america for wheat were growing three or four times more uh, yield per acre uh, the farmers uh, in india perhaps were growing uh, double and even our own progressive farmers were close to what the regional uh, best or the international best farmers were performing but most of the farmers uh, were producing far less uh, than uh, the, uh, from from one acre of land or from one cow uh, that the international competition was doing. So on the surface level, uh, cost of production, which was increasing and causing the problems for the farmers. Uh, whereas in reality, uh, the actual challenge was the low yield or the low productivity of the Pakistani farmers. So in first in instance, if, if we would have defined the goal as reducing the cost of production for the farmers, this would have resulted in actions like you know, subsidizing electricity, subsidizing uh, seed, subsidizing fertilizers. And, you know, 10 years down the line, uh, after spending so much money, you know, the yield would have remained more or less same and no real solution would have come. Whereas uh, in the second case where we define uh, the yield, uh, lower yield as the challenge or, or as a problem, the goal uh, would be or is now uh, the increase in yield or growth in yield. And uh, the action sets that we were considering were, you know, more research and development. So uh, higher yielding technologies can be developed and handed over to the farmers. Uh, the better seeds, the better fertilizers, uh, the better uh, tools and equipment. So they can uh, have a, a much more yield from one acre of land. Uh, so their productivity increase. So this is an example uh, of where initially uh, the challenge and the problem that we identified were not the correct challenge or the problem and and the goal that we could have reached based on those problems were the wrong goals versus uh, you know uh, when we did a little deeper research uh, we found out that uh, uh, the actual problem was something somewhere else and the goals that we defined were more accurate and the action sets and the strategies and the measuring criteria that we defined uh, were more sort of aligning us with the right goals uh, and therefore as an outcome, uh, we feel that uh, this strategy will deliver uh, the real result and fix the problem of, let's say, the lower yield uh, over a period of time and make the Pakistani farmers competitive uh, with their international competition.